Hi guys, welcome at Car Territory. In a previous video, you could see my RX-8. This video, it will be a second part of, of the video about the RX-8. We will have a, a little closer look about what is an RX-8 and what do you get when you buy an RX-8. And I will give you some tips uh, or things you have to keep in mind uh, before you decide to buy an RX-8. There are two generations of RX-8. You have the first edition like this one. And then there is a facelift version. Uh, which is unfortunately not uh, sold in the Benelux due some emission norms. So this version has been built between 2003-2008. And the facelift version was been built between 2008-2012. So in the Benelux you only will find these types of cars, so the first generation of an RX-8 you have two variants. You have an SP version, which is the lowest one, the lowest performance, and you have the HP version, which is the high performance one, uh, which is the top of the model. An SP version delivers 192 horsepower and an HP version delivers 231 horsepower. First of all, lots of, of you asked me to show the engine, so let's do it right now. Let's pop the bonnet. A rotary engine is actually not that big. You can't see that much. This is the engine bay. I'm going to try to remove the cover so you have a little idea of what a rotary engine looks like. So this actually is just a rotary engine. It's not, not that big. Maybe perhaps I can show you if it's possible. So only from here Still over there, between the air, the oil filter, that small part is a rotary engine. So even the width from here till here, that little block is a 1.3 rotary engine. Now, how do you know if your car? is an SP version or an HP version. Well, for example, there are little little things which are the difference. For example, there are a lot of options which you can get on the SP version. The HP version is a car uh, which is almost full option. You only can, could have an, an extra option about cruise control and the sunroof, but everything else, the leather, the leather seating, uh, sat nav, I will show you in a moment, is uh, all inclusive. So, uh, a little bit of the difference between the car and uh, HP version have Xenon headlights, which also have, but it's probably a little bit difficult to see, which have two oil coolers, but that's a little bit technical. So, near the fog lights, there are two oil coolers. You will have at the back the little spoiler lip, but as I said, those things are also an option when you when you want to buy an, uh, an SP version. But there are two major things which I can't change, and that's about the engine. First of all, you have a six-speed. Show you. You have a six-speed manual transmission gearbox for an HP version. So the top version has a six-speed manual gearbox, and the uh, the SP version has a five-speed gearbox. And the other major thing is the rev counting, which I show you. And it's not very. 
very clear. So, so the HP version goes to 9,000, 9,500 RPM, where uh, SP version, so the 192 horsepower version, will only goes to eight and a half, eight thousand eight and a half. So those two things you can't change about the car. Everything else is optional with the SP version. So you can have the, the xenon lights, you can have the little uh, spoiler lip. Uh, but the gearbox and the rev counting, it's impossible to change. The SP version, so the 192 horsepower version, is in Belgium around 4,000, between 4,000 and 8,000 euros. In uh, the Netherlands is between five and a half and eight and a half thousand euros. So there's not that much difference between the two cars, uh, between the countries. The HP version, so the top version with 231 horsepower, uh, you will get them in Belgium around 10,000, 12,000 euro, and in the Netherlands around 11,000 euro. Of course, I can't give you all the prices of every country, so I will stick to Belgium and the Netherlands because they are the most common and probably the most people uh, in, in this neighborhood will, will buy a car in the Netherlands or in Belgium. Now, what do you get for that money? I will show you a little bit of things around the car, what you will get for your money. First of all, you have four doors. I'll show you. So you have four doors, two in the front, two suicide back doors. There's a place for four people in the car. And even when you sit at the back, because of the soft back, you see there's a soft back, your knees will move perfectly in it. So even large people don't have that problems to sit in the back for a little trip. Let's swing around and have a look at the dashboard. And see what else you get. So, as I said, this car just don't have the uh, the cruise control, which is normally over here, and uh, the the sunroof because. In Belgium or in the Netherlands the weather is most of the time that horrible I don't need a sunroof. On the other hand you get a set nav which is with a, a DVD. Uh, you had you you've got an automatic cruise control. You have a radio which is with mute. As you can see you have a six CD box, CD player, you have a full leather st steering wheel, as I said, 6 speed manual gearbox. You also can get them in automatic, but most of them are in, uh, in European or uh, manual gearbox. You have heated front seats and of course a very very nice handbrake. You also got a lot of compartments to store things in. So for example this one you can pull it back. You have one you can lift it up and then at the back you also got one where is also the DVD of the navigation. At the back you have a little hatch which reads into the boot for for example placing some large stuff like skis or or whatever you want it. The, the boot is quite large so it's 290 liters boot so it's, it's going quite deep. The only thing you have to keep in mind is the the space between the upper side and the lower side 
it's not that big so if you put for example uh, a crate of, of, of beer or something else in it it just fits you have to fit when you fit the the entrance there's no problem to to store a lot of, of stuff in the car first of all the usage of the car you have to keep in mind a rotary engine is not like every other engine in other cars you have to pay attention on it you have to to be careful with it um, otherwise it will be broken for example if you want to move it from the driveway to the street uh, and you turn off the, the engine you will have a hundred percent chance the next time the car won't start at all so make sure before you turn off the engine the, the, um, the motor or the engine is warm so go drive a little bit uh, but make sure the engine is warm enough before turning out how can you test if your engine or the engine or of the car you want to buy is still in the right shape First of all, go and drive a little tour, then turn off the ignition and try to turn it back on. If the car won't start immediately over or have a lot of difficult to, uh, to start up again, you will have a big chance the, the rotary engine uh, will broken very soon and to fix it it will cost you around 6500 euros. A rotary engine is a high rev engine. So it means it has to make a lot of revs, so it consumes a lot of fuel, but also a little bit of oil. Because there is a little bit of oil needed um, to, to close the, the, the rotary chambers, to close the seals, uh, and makes the, the engine works perfectly. So you have to keep in mind, every 1500 kilometers, you have to add a little bit of oil, around a half a liter, um, so make sure if you go to or, or you you're gonna do road trips for a long distance you have to take a bottle of a little bit of oil with you so you don't get any troubles underway a rotary engine have to be changed oil every 5,000 kilometers maximum 7,500 kilometers so be aware uh, when you go to a, to a Mazda dealer and you have to do a service you have to go a little bit more or a lot more than uh, with a normal car so guys I hope you enjoyed the video and can do something with the information I gave you about the RX-8 be aware if you want to buy this car to use as a daily driver it's quite expensive in uses for fuel and oil and services if you want to use this car as a weekend driver just for fun I can highly recommend it to buy it and I'm pretty pretty sure this car will give you a big smile on your face while driving it. Thank you for watching guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or any questions about the RX-8 or about what you have to keep in mind or what you have to do uh, for buying an RX-8, put them in the comment box below, I will answer them gladly. Uh, if you want to see plenty more videos to come uh, for example the road trip is in the near future I think about two or three weeks I do in the road trip to the mountains with this car I will try to make daily vlogs from it so if you want to see them don't forget to subscribe I thank you for watching guys and see you next time ciao